All right. And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Bunny! Yes? If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't a big fan? It's sweeping the nation. But uh, it, only the real fans, the true hardcore fans, the ride or die fans who have been with us since the beginning when we were just a zine. Yes. Uh, the official zine of uh, Borders, Books, and Music. Yes. Uh, that, that wasn't very successful. The the people who have been with us since the beginning, they would know two two facts about us, two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, Bunny and Mei Lin. First off is the fact that when you are doing the podcast, Bunny, you are a a celebrated, a celebrated hip hop street dancer. What made you? want to become a hip-hop street dancer well first you know celebrated you know i i kind of have to reject that i mean I, i'm just bunny from the streets you know yeah. Yeah. same dude i've always been uh i i had a really bad fall on some ice uh and and it's you know and there's nowhere to land but more concrete when you're walking in the, on when you slip on the ice in the streets, you know, you're just trying yeah. to not hit your head on the curb. So I had managed not to completely fall, but went through just wild movements in trying to save myself from cracking my head on the curb and one thing led to another you know i was spotted by some guys they asked me to come to this competition they they thought i actually like did these moves all the time and i didn't so now i have to duplicate it in front of people and luckily i was able to do it uh Go figure. Good. Yeah, yeah. It, it, what a crazy random happenstance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. What I was, love it, it. What was that also, Saturday Night Live bit, the Jay-Z story? Yes, with Mike O'Brien. Yes. Jay-Z. I love that so much. And we did, we did that for the show, too, yes. That's, yeah, we did. Yeah. I love that skit. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the show where I get a story from from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is. It's time once again for another educational, educational installment of Steve's Historic Approximation. <laughs> Okay. Are you choking? Are you choking? You good? Dun dun dun. Oof, you scared me, bunny. Or chef, as I like to call it, repeatedly annoyingly, whether anyone really wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name chef. It's simple, short and simple. And as much as I like the movie, uh, obviously. Whose idea was it to make the movie with Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, John Leguizamo, Chris Penn, RuPaul, and call it Too Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar? That's too long of a movie title. Yes. Too long. It needs to be short and simple. Like, chap. That's simple. Yes. Eve's Historic Approximations, the podcast segment. That's too long. That's why that's why Shap is there. That is why Shap is right there. And especially and, even even at that point, it had been years since I had heard the name of Julie Newmore spoken out loud. Yeah. 
So yeah. I was like, you really do have me with the title. Yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. I'm I'm iffy with it. Forever. I'm iffy with it. I, I kind of like it overall. Yeah. But the ca- except for John Leguizamo, the casting kind of pisses me off. Wesley Snipes and Patrick Swayze are too into them macho bullshit to l- give it over to the role. Yes. Okay, I can agree with that. John Leguizamo, he goes, he goes all in. Those two look like they are play acting. You know, they're yeah. not doing their job. You know, they're 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 not being very good actors. They're not giving yeah. themselves over to the role. Miss Chi Chi yeah. did, yes. Yes. Anywho, this week on the old Chappity Shap Chap, we will be discussing the legendary real-life Chinese serial killer who was sentenced to death, pause for effect in parentheses, and his famous movie star dogs, second pause for effect in parentheses, who were also sentenced to death. Bunny, do you need me to run that by you again? I do think I could use one more time. Okay. We will be discussing the Chinese serial killer who was sentenced to death and his famous movie star dogs who were also sentenced to death. Okay. Absolutely true story. Bizarre, and I love it. Now, a lot of people go gaga over serial killers. There are fandoms out there. I've never been one of those people. But I dare say, if you see someone heavily into rockabilly or someone with tattoo sleeves, the odds are pretty good that they could tell you a lot about H.H. Holmes or Richard Ramirez. I like to know who all of the serial killers are. I enjoyed the period of my life that I explored serial killers. Not into serial killers and like that dive into the shallow end is more than enough for me. You know what I mean? Because what I wound up finding is just pretty much any one of them they're pathetic. Yeah. They're they're just pathetic. You know, and I just can't, I just can't watch that much of that. Like, really? Like, Jeffrey Dahmer is trying to turn somebody into a zombie so that they never leave him. Like, okay, get him a real doll. Or, like, like that is, that is like, (laughs) that is like beyond pathetic. Like, okay, so yeah. that's why you're killing people? Yeah. Yeah. Now, yes, fictional, and this is an overall theory of mine, okay? Yeah. Just like Nazis, okay? Nazis, okay. when you actually get into Nazis, are completely fucking pathetic. Yeah. And disgusting. Yeah. But movie serial killers or movie Nazis, yes, cool as fucking shit. Yes, absolutely. How the hell do you beat that? none of these real serial killers? Hold a candle to fucking Hannibal Lecter. Yep, that's what a other, killer. Uh... But I dare say that if you're into rockabilly, there's a good chance that you also it it it's a safe it's safe to assume that that person knows a lot about Charles Chuck Manson, yeah, or uh, come on Eileen Wernos or the Zodiac Killer. What it, housewives do? Housewives also know a lot about serial killers because true yes. crime podcasts are a big thing. What other? 
uh, groups might know a lot about serial killers. Uh, Hot Topic employees. Yes. I can't think of any others, but because we're ignorant... Any, any emo. Any emo. Most goths in general. Yeah. And I'm not sure why, but also Alanis Morissette. Yeah. 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 But because we're ignorant Americans, we usually just focus on American serial killers, but there are other countries who have serial killers too. I've always personally been fascinated by Fred and Rose West, the married couple who killed at least 12 people, their stories super fucked up. Uh, I, it, I like the, uh, and, and then of course, uh, it, it, I'm not going to get into Fred and Rose West because that would be an Elmer McCurdy sized show. I'm, I'm not familiar with them. Oh, uh, look them up on Wikipedia. Even just reading the Wikipedia page for them is fucked up. Yeah. Really fucked up. I, I, I'm assuming that there have been serial killers in Canada, but I like the idea of like a really polite Canadian serial killer. Yeah. Hey, so uh, if it's all right with you, uh, I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fine. Can I, can I get a Molson's before we uh before you kill me? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so the serial killer in question for today's shaft was named Cheng Peng. He was born into privilege. He had money, but he had a bit of an "I can do whatever I want" sort of American psycho meets me you madness thing going on. Side note. Remember me, you madness bunny? Yes. Holy shit. That was the, the form- Steve Mnuchin one, right? Yep. Yeah. Former Secretary of State Steve Mnuchin's wife made a film in 2021, and it is the absolute worst. Her name is Louise Linton, and the movie is so fucking bad. So Cheng Peng started hanging with the wrong crowd. His parents hated that. Cheng started a thieving. And he got arrested, and his rich father was all like, yeah, I can afford to bail you out, but I won't. Learn a lesson, son. And so Chengy did time in labor. I'm going to call Cheng Peng Chengy for the rest of this shaft. Yeah. I just like how it sounds. So Chengy did time in a labor prison. He gets out, and his rich-ass dad goes, hey, Chengy, you need to, like, straighten your, your act out. So, uh, I've arranged a marriage for you. And boom, Changi's married. And the belief is, ha, you're married and your wife will be around and your wife will be able to make sure that you're on the straight and narrow. But she's always away at work, which means our boy Changi is always alone. And uh, that's a no good. Yeah. With Italian hand gestures. If you're just listening to this on... uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. You're not seeing the Italian hand gestures. So just know that's a spicy meatball is what I'm doing. So Chengi meets another woman and they start doing it, but Chengi's worried that his wife will find out. So one day he gets a big ass pipe and hits her dead and then dismembers her and buries the pieces in the backyard like you do. So that was victim number one. There would be five more victims. Sometimes he'd kill them and bury the bodies. Sometimes he'd dismember and bury the parts. Sometimes he'd do it alone. Sometimes he would do it with a gang he formed, and they would thieve and steal firearms, and occasionally they'd help him kill this gang, with finger quotes, gang. They didn't have a name. I'm going to go ahead and call them the Friendship Bunch. I think that's a yeah. good name for a gang of thieves and murderers. The Giggle Fits. The Giggle Fits. The Super Friends. Yeah. The Get Along <laughs> Gang. That was a real cartoon from 1984, and I loved it. The Get Along Gang. I'm still kind of stuck on the spicy meatball. I, I, I'm spicy kind of a, I'm kind of amazed that. A catchphrase from an early 70s commercial 
popular commercial, but that that phrase is still around to to now. That's some long fucking jevity. And I find it even more fascinating that it's kind of a natural go-to thing to say, even though a lot of people now probably have no idea where it came no from. No idea. Yeah. I, it, it, vaguely related to what you just said, there was a time in the 90s and 2000s where people who had never seen a single episode of Kids in the Hall would still go, I'm squishing your head. Squish, yes. Squish. And, yeah. and and they had never seen kids in the hall, but that just became so popular that everyone did it. Just like just like I am convinced a hundred years from now, if we are still here, people will still be saying, turn it up to eleven and have yep. no idea no clue what spinal tap even is yeah not at all isn't that something i find that that really fascinating these things that just like kind of sneak into the language (laughs) yeah yeah so okay so chinese serial killer six victims that's an okay chap right there the, this Chinese serial killer, and it was and it was an Alka Seltzer commercial, by the way. Oh, that's a spicy meatball, yeah, yeah. Because it was yeah, it was I an Italian. It, the commercial was it was an Italian family, but they were shooting a commercial for the sauce and the the spice the spicy meatball, and he had to be doing it take after take after take after take, and he kept saying, "That's a spicy meatball. That's a spicy meatball. That's a." And he was just getting sicker and sicker from eating all the fucking meatballs. Yeah. That it's he like needed a, Alka-Seltzer. It's like uh, uh, Lucille Ball with Vegemite of or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And she keeps getting drunk from the thing. So, Chinese serial killer, six victims. That's a, that's a okay chap. That's a fine chap. That's a decent chap. But what puts it over the egg? is what happens between victims five and six. That puts this chap over the top. That puts this chap at 11. Yes. So Chengy's has got a gang now, the get-along gang, and they need money. They need more money, and Chengy hears from someone, hey, you know what makes good money? Dog breeding, dog training. That makes a ton of money. So Chengy gets like 20 to 30 dogs, and in between murdering, he has himself a successful business training dogs. Okay. So, uh, put a pin on that. Put a pin on Cheng Tang, the Pope on Film podcast, keeping the pin industry alive. Put yes. a pin on Chengy, because let's talk movies. Okay. It's 1993 in China, and director Xi Jin is working on a big-time prestige drama called An Old Man and His Dog. It's uh, a film set in rural China. It exposes the status quo issues in China, and in particular, the plight of lonely elderly people. Real award bait drama, big-time prestige film. If this was an American film, we would call it Oscar bait. I don't know what you would call it in China. Chinese Oscar bait, but uh, big time prestige film here. And eventually they nab an actor to play the old man, an actor named Tian <laughs> Zhi. But the dog has to be perfect. Can't just get any dog from the street. It has to be the perfect right dog. And there's open calls for dogs to star in it. There's uh, auditions, but the director is mad picky. No, no, no. The dog is at the center of the film. The drama, the it, it all, the sadness, it all rests on this old man and his dog. This dog has to be perfect. And then someone else comes to him. Well, hey, Mr. Director, I do have an option. Apparently, there's a guy in town. And he trains dogs. So the director goes on down to uh, visit 
the Get Along Gang, the Giggle Fits. Mr. Pang, we want four of your dogs to star in our film. We will pay you handsomely. What do you say? And our boy Changi goes, hmm. Only if I get a part in this movie. Okay. And that is how a legitimate serial killer and his dogs were featured on screen in a Chinese drama. This yes. murderer's dogs starred in the film, whereas Changi himself was cast as the star's body double. So in the 1993 Chinese film, An Old Man and His Dog, whenever you see the star from behind, like riding a horse, that's a serial killer. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm about to kill my sixth victim, but first, I'm wanted on the set. <laughs> Sure, the son of Sam killed a bunch of people, but was he also in the outlaw Josie Wales? No, but no. there was. But there was a serial killer whose name escapes me, who was a contestant on the dating game. That is true. I I think it was it uh that handsome one that everybody loves. Might have been Bundy. You think you think it yeah. Bundy? Yeah. He's considered handsome. He, he looks weird to me. Yeah. Then there's then there was that time that uh, John Wayne Gacy was in Annie Hall. Yeah. Yeah, his line was, these pretzels are making me thirsty. That was his big line in Annie Hall. Okay. And let's not forget uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's amazing turn as the star of the Milagro Beanfield War. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, when it comes to serial killers, advantage Chang Pang, advantage Changi. Yeah. He made it into a movie. So the movie, An Old Man and His Dog, comes out in 1993. Huge hit in China. Massive hit. People love it. Well-reviewed. Wins a ton of awards. It currently has a 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb, which is definitely a better score than Recep Eva Deke 7. <laughs> Wow. Our podcast is our podcast is big in Turkey because we keep mentioning the Recep Eva Deke franchise. Yeah. It is it has now been over a year that we have been discussing Recep Eva Deke. We're going to have to watch one or two eventually. Yeah. So cut to it's 1995 and Chengi's wife is all I'm starting to get suspicious about shit. So she calls the police and the police are all like, okay, I guess we better investigate. And and so knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Cheggy answers. Hi, how you doing? And it's like, hello, Mr. Peng. It's us, the police from whatever this town is in China. Uh, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, well, we just have a we got a call about some some suspicious shit going on, and we just need to take a look around your the premises. And Shengi goes, oh, okay, well, I, I have a business here I'm running. Is it okay if, you know, I, I tend to my work while you're looking around? And the police are like, oh, yeah, we'll be in and out. We just have to take a look around. We know you're a respected businessman. So it's fine. You can wander around the house, do whatever you need to do. We're just going to take a look around your place and then leave. And it's like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go uh, and work on my dogs. And it's like, yeah, you go ahead. You're a respected person in this town. You were in that movie. Yeah. Huge deal. You go ahead and uh, work on your dogs and we'll just take a look around the house. And Shengi goes, okay. So he goes to the backyard, he goes to the kennel, he climbs the kennel, he jumps off of the roof of the kennel. Next thing you know, he's running through the neighborhood away from the house. And the police are like, huh, looks like uh, he's climbed on top of that kennel and he's, okay, he's out of the yard. Okay, he's running away. Well, I guess he was just busy or something. 
Maybe he was late for a meeting. It's fine. Yeah. Let's not make a deal about it. He's a respected businessman. You know, let's uh, let's just take a look around, and, and then we can go back to the precinct. And, uh, huh, seems to be a lot of shotguns here. And a lot of bloodstains. Well, shit. <laughs> so they they call some people they start digging up the backyard there's a body there there's a body there there's a foot there's an arm uh they find a shit ton of people parts and uh the head of police whom in my mind is uh, J. jonah jameson yeah it's like so what happened to so cheng peng is a murderer i can't believe it uh it's a good thing you arrested him uh yeah the thing about that is he is long gone. Okay. We kind of sort of just let him wander around while we were. Yeah, that's our bad. Uh, yeah, we didn't arrest him. We kind of let him go. So Changi's on the run. And seriously, the adventures he gets into while on the lamb. See, I like to. I like path. to picture. I like to picture here. You know, he's outside. He's training his dogs. The cops whoever come they he go all right and they go inside and they go to look and investigate and then he turns and he starts running so fast that he's not moving at first and there's just dust building up along his feet and yeah. then he goes Doom! <laughs> yeah like a, a looney tune style but he is he is gone for like six months on the lamb and going to different towns and getting into adventures. At one point in time, he gets a job as an apprentice to someone. Like, he, like it's a whole chap in and of itself, him, uh, this Chinese serial killer being on the lamb. But yada, 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 Chengi is arrested. The <coughs> get along gang, the, the giggle fits are arrested. And Chengi is basically laughing at police. And he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, the police are like, don't you feel bad about what you did? I don't. Well, you will face a reckoning from God upon your death. I fear God does not exist. I fear no God. And, you know, he's he's just having a blast. And eventually he, he basically says, ha, good luck finding out how many people I killed. I fed most of the bodies to my dogs. Oh, yeah. So remember how I said the serial killer and his dogs were both killed? Apparently, Chengi would dismember the bodies, and oftentimes he would just get like, here's a hand, here's a foot, here's a torso, and feed it to his dogs, including the four who starred in the award winning 1993 Chinese drama An Old Man and His Dog. Okay. An old man and his dog who ate people. So in September of 1995, Cheng Peng was killed as well as his main accomplice, and they put down all four of the dogs. Oh, who well. starred in the film. And I think that's kind of fucked up, right? They were it's kind the, of accomplices, though. I don't know. You know. It's not their. It's not the dog's fault that they were fed body parts and ate body parts. I, I I don't I don't know, but isn't there like a theory like once an animal like a dog tastes human flesh then they're kind of like addicted to it? I like I don't know if that's real or some urban legend horse shit or something like that. What was the name of the movie where they put humans in cat food and cats start attacking people? Real shitty movie. Oh, I don't know. Was that a was that just Corpse Grinders? That's I think it, it was Corpse, Corpse Grinders. grinders. Yeah. yeah, the Corpse Grinders. Love that stupid movie. And and so here's this award-winning Chinese film. Not only is there a serial killer in it, but dogs, but dogs that ate humans starred in the film. And so even though the movie was an award-winning drama, the Chinese government banned the film for over 20 years. Wow. 
only recently allowing it to be removed from the Disney vault. Isn't that something? Yeah. That is fascinating to me. This is an award-winning film. It's like if we learned that one of the uh one of the little people from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Had Todd Browning's freaked a woman. See that again? It, it it I was thinking like, hey, what if what if the munchkins from The Wizard of Oz pulled a freaks on some woman? A Todd Browning's freaks. They all got together yeah. the human torso and Johnny X and the pinheads and they made yeah. a, a a woman into like a into like a, a bird person. Well, you know, Rumor has it that those were some tough-ass munchkins. I never saw that. Or maybe I did, and I just don't remember it. That movie Chevy Chase did about the munchkins. Over the Rainbow with Carrie Fisher. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I Maybe I saw it and I just forgot it, but... Man, that movie was a trip, I think. I saw it I... not too long ago. I saw it when yep. I came out. And I thought it was a really good movie. Uh, I found it really entertaining. I thought it was funny and all that. And I watched it not too terribly long ago. And I was like, eh. Yeah. Like, I, it's, okay, it's okay. But overall, just eh. Yeah, last Christmas... My family got me a DVD of Heartbeats. Oh, wow. And it's like, I saw that in theaters when it came out. And I was super young, but I saw it in theaters. And I do not have the heart to open up that DVD and watch the movie. Uh, uh, from everything I've heard, don't. Because I remember liking Pleasant it when I was like Pleasant memories three, four. are too hard to find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can watch it now. Like, uh, I am so sorry I've ever gone back in as an adult and yeah. tried to watch an Elvis movie. Ugh, yeah. I yeah. used to fucking love the Elvis movies when I was a kid. And thought he was, he was literally cooler than Fonzie. He was the only one who was cooler than Fonzie. Yeah. Yeah. It was Elvis. And oh my God, like I even tried watching Blue Hawaii, which is the one that gets <laughs> his biggest critical acclaim. And it's just like, oh, I can't do this. Clam bake, gonna have a clam bake. And I really, really think that a big problem with it is that these movies are so fucking white. Yeah, they're they're insane. It, it is just it is just like Blue Hawaii is like white man paradise. Like Yeah. Rich men from the dole industry, and it's just, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, so that's it for Steve. So, so if you have a childhood me. memory, leave it the fuck alone. Yep. Absolutely. I am fine with that. I haven't watched uh, the Never Ending Story since I was in my twenties. Yeah. I have no interest in watching that movie again. Maybe I ate it on there. Okay, never mind. Uh, so that's it for Steve's historic approximations this week. I like the idea of a serial killer accidentally making it into a movie in between uh, Murders 5 and 6. Yes. I think that's really neat that this movie was banned for over 20 years because of a serial killer and his, his uh, human-eating dogs. Well, I think that's kind of like 
spawning a kill a serial killer in media because really even the dating game yeah. is fucking cool uh yeah it, it, it's it's as close as we're going to get to spotting doctor who yeah you know yeah that's as close as we're gonna get but they're gonna yeah. pop up in weird places it's just but really, where can you put a serial killer that it's not sh- that it's not sh- like? What if you had pictures of him at a museum? That would be fucked up too. Like, <gasps> yeah, the serial killer at the museum. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But it's fun. so that so that's it for Steve's historic approximations this week. Be sure and join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations. And cut on that. Bunny.